Good morning everyone, this is Bremster, and today I'm coming to you with Everything Down Here Floats by Bob Gray. Now, I don't know who actually created this puzzle. This was sent to me by an email address that was Bob Gray, and Bob Gray is the pseudonym, well, the real name or pseudonym or whatever, I can't actually remember, it's been a long time since I've read the book, of Pennywise the Clown. And whoever set this up and created this puzzle went to a very, very, a lot of effort to make sure that this was submitted by Bob Gray. Ick. <laughs> um, it is one of my favorite books. I kind of liked the Tim Curry telly movie because it had a lot of actors in it that I like. Um, I mean, it. Tim Curry, Olivia Hussey, it had some great people in it. The modern movies, I thought, were not great. They were interesting horror movies, but I don't think they were a great telling of the story of It, um, which is a book that is... I mean, neither was the original. Like, the original was probably worse. But the actual story in the book is deeply terrifying. Um, and... What I love about it, it's just a scary story. Um, there was a lot more of the book in the two-part movie, but they also grabbed some stuff and just did movie tropes that I thought were not well done. Um, anyway, let's. this is not a movie review channel. This is a Sudoku channel, but this is a puzzle definitely based on that story. Whoever went to the effort of, like, creating an email address to submit the puzzle, well done. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, very, very cool. So let's have a look at the puzzle, shall we? So we have normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. Cells in the same relative position in different boxes cannot contain the same digits. So what this is the disjoint rule. I haven't done a disjoint puzzle in, holy cow, maybe 400 puzzles on the channel. I don't know. Um, I don't remember doing one. It's been a long time. And what that means, actually... It, Actually, thinking about it now, there may have been one recently, so I may have just completely... I, I am out of my brain right now. Um, what that means is if you look at the same position in any box, like those are position one in the same... Um, in the in the boxes, all of those will be a, um, a, a, a set of the digits one to nine. These are position two in the boxes. All of those will be a set of the digits from one to nine. And the same will be the true for position three, position four, position five, all the way through to the final positions in the box. Um, kings Cells that are a king's move apart in chess may not contain the same digit. And what that means is because this is a five, normally those digits couldn't be a five by Sudoku, but it also means means those digits cannot be a five because a king could move to that square if this was a chessboard. Um, digits in cages must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. So this um, and digits, it doesn't say that digits can't repeat within cages, but I'm assuming that's the case because um, this is the killer rule. Um, We'll find out. Um, but what that would normally mean is it's not stated, but I'm I'm going to assume it. It's there. Um, that the digits in the cages must uh, the the sum of the digits in the cages will be the digit that is here. So these three will sum to thirteen. Um, in fact, this is the only. Oh no, these two cages could repeat, and that one could actually have. Hmm. Uh, but I'm assuming it's normal killer rule, so the digits cannot repeat. Uh, now, this is the weird rule. Um, the two-digit number, a two-digit number is indicated reading from left to right by the gray cells on the grid. So these are two-digit numbers. Um, the number is always the same. Think of gray cells as clones. Okay, so these are clone cells. Each two-digit number has a one-digit decimal value after the black point. Okay, so they're each something dot something. Decimal values are all different and do not repeat. 
Note the two-digit number can appear elsewhere on the grid. Don't mind it. Okay. And it would have to because there's a disjoint rule in place. So that, 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 that. Okay, anyway, let's get to that when solving. So that's the rules. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. So we do know that that, 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 and that, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are all the same digit. Let's mark them in yellow. So what we have is one of those two and one of those two are going to be the other yellow digit. I think that's not the way to go yet. Well, maybe it is with this one. So let's do that. Let's use yellow and blue, because yellow and blue, so these are, a, a, no, blue is one of those, no, hang on, blue is right there, because blue is in here, so blue, this is blue, because blue, 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 blue has to be down here, but those two cells are seen, so this is blue, which means down here, blue is right there. But if this is blue, that can't be yellow because yellow and blue are different. So yellow is in one of those two. So this is yellow and now this is yellow. Okay. So now we know the position of yellow and blue throughout the grid, but I don't know what they are. I could possibly do some elimination because yellow sees... Well, it can't be one, nine, five, or eight. And that matters here because, oh, I'm going to get a whole bunch of digits because yellow and blue or the two clone cells sum to nine because this is a 10 cage. So these sum to nine. So this is a 17 cage, but these sum to nine. So 17 minus nine, this is eight. This is eight. 13 minus nine, this is a four. 13 minus 9, this is a 4. 14 minus 9, this is a 5. Okay. Now there's a, oh, the disjoint rule as well. And King's Move. Oh my lord, this is going to be tricky. So four is not in any of those. Four is not yellow because of that. So four is in one of those three. Um, uh, too many rules. Eight is in one of those two, which means eight is not this. So what is this? It's got a sum to 10. It can't be one nine. It can't be two eight. No, what am I talking about? It sums to nine. It can't be one eight. It can't be four five. So it's two seven or three six. It's two seven or three six. Well, yellow can't be seven, so blue can't be two, because if I put seven there, this would have to be a zero. So this is two, three, or six. So this is five, four, or one. So this is three, six, or seven. So this is three, seven, or four, and it's not four, so this is not six. If that is not six, then this is not three. So this is not three, and this is not four, and now four is in here. But this is now three, seven. Which means, no, that doesn't mean that at all. I 
I worry this is going to be a full on coloring puzzle. So eight is not there or in any of those. So eight is in uh, eight is in one of those two because eight can't go there or there by king's move and that eight sees those. So eight is in one of those two. So eight is in one of those three. Eight over here is... Oh, eight over here is placed because it's not in these, which sums to nine because I can't use one eight. It's not down here and this eight knocks out this one. So this is the eight. So this is not the eight and this is the eight. Now, eight down here can't be here because this is two six. So this is the eight. In fact, I can put two six in all of these. Two six and blue is three seven. Now this is not eight anymore. Now eight is not here. Eight is not here and eight is not here. So eight is in one of those two. So that's not the eight and that's the eight. But we've got disjoint, don't we? That eight means that's not eight. That's eight. So that's not eight and that's eight. And that's all the eights. have to remember disjoint as well. Crikey. I don't think this is going to be hard. I think it's going to be just a lot to remember in figuring out what is relevant at the time. So four is in one of those two by Sudoku. Is four where I'm looking now? Four is not in any of those cells. That one by King's Move, those ones by Sudoku. Actually, maybe it's five because this five sees that, that five sees that. So five is in one of those two, which means up here, five is in one of those two. Down here, five is also limited because five has to be down here, but not here because this five sees all of those cells and that five sees that one. So five is in one of those two. So five is placed in this box. Five can't be here because of those fives. It can't be in those because of the five that's there. That And those two are seen by that one. That's a five, which places five up here. Now, there's also the thing that these all have to be unique values. The only one I've got is an eight, which I've already placed all of. I've got all the yellows, I've got all the blues. Like, can I just pick one of these and then try and work it around the grid? One's in the middle of a box, so that's not helpful.
The other trick you can often do with disjoint is try and figure out, is there a particular position in a box where it can only happen in a single box? But when you're starting to solve like that, it starts to get incredibly messy. Such as, I can't put five in any of those. I can't put five there. I can't put five there or there. So five is in one of those three. But when you start solving for stuff like that, it starts getting incredibly messy. And you're basically doing a hunt and peck. So you start sort of marking wherever digits can go and hoping you can figure it out. The only digit I've got much on is four. Oh, I've got two fives, two fours. I'm really lost. One in this box is in one of those two. Because these can't be one and one can't be here. So one is in one of those two. So one is in one of these two. Now that's knocked one out of that cell. but that hasn't done much either. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six more digits to put in those. So four is restricted down here. So four is in one of those two. Nine. Nine is not up here. Actually, I can do something similar. Nine is not here or here. So nine is in one of those two. So nine is in one of those two. Now, interestingly enough, if that's a nine, that's a nine. Because I can't make both of those nine. Because that would put two of the same digit on dots. This rule set really struck me as something that would be give a lot of information, but I'm not seeing it at all. So this is the other three seven. Let's call it green. Can I see where green needs to go in other boxes? Not really. Like in this box, it can't go there or there. So it's one of those, but it's just one of those. So do I just have to pick one of these and figure out where it can go in other boxes based on the fact that it can't repeat? So for example, that digit right there, let's call it purple. 
in this box, it's not four, it's not eight. It could be five. It can't be two, six. It can't be three, seven. So it can't be any of those three digits. And it can't be the dot. So it's one of those two. But it's either of those two. So is it that digit? Let's use orange. That digit in this box. Can't be four, can't be eight, can't be two, six, or three, seven. Can't be that digit, can't be that digit, can't be that digit. So it's one of those two. But this is just hunting and pecking. This isn't that digit, dark green. In this box? No. In this box? It's not that. It's not five. It could be four. It's not that digit. It's not three, seven. So it's any of those three. That's not it either. So I've just got to pick one of these digits. I've got to pick the right one and then figure out which box to look in. What's the flow to this? Okay, I can see one can't be down here. So one is in one of those two. So one is up here somewhere. That's actually not restricting anything at all. Five. Five is in one of those three. That's not impacted by disjoint king's move dot rule. And doesn't impact anywhere else either. That digit in this box, it's not any of those, it's not that one, it's not the dot, it's not two or six, it's not eight. So this is four or five. Right, here we go. This digit, not those, can't be that by king's move, can't be eight, there's an eight in the box, can't be two, six, three, seven, and it can't be the dot digit. So all that's left is four and five, and it sees five. So that's a four. That's a hard spot. So four is down here, but not in the bottom one, because that would disjoint with that. But it can't be here because it's already a dot. So that's not the four, that's the four. Which puts four down here.
No, it doesn't, because that can't be a 4. These can't be 4, that can't be 4, that can't be 4, and that disjoint. So 4 is in here, which means that's not the 4, and that's the 4. So the positions for 4s now... Are those dark green? Is that what I've got? Now it can't be at the end of a dot, so that's not a four. So these two are now the fours, which means that's not the four and that's the four. And that runs dry. So now I need to find another one. And it kind of needs to be one that's touching other boxes like that one did. So maybe this one. So this one here can't be those. It can't be eight. It can't be two, three, six, seven. It can't be the dot. So green is in here somewhere. Is that enough? I need to narrow it down to a single cell, really. Well, what? I am not getting it. So the digits that can't go on dots are eight and four, but I've already got that. I've got all the eights and I've got the fours pencil marked in boxes. I mean, is it this quadruple? This is one, two, can't be three, four, five, six, and nine. These are one, two, six, and nine. This can't be one, so one is down here. And this can't be one because one is there. So one is down here, which means one, well, hang on, one is down here. So this is actually a five. So this is not a five. So this is a two and yellow is two and these had to, so this is blue is seven. So this is a three and that's a lot of digits and I can now get rid of all the coloring. This is not a two anymore. These are not two. I can still keep the one. There's a three in one of those, but I don't have. So this is a six or a nine.
this triple maybe, one, two, three, four, five, six, and nine. This can't be one or nine. That's the six. Now, it can't be one because it sees it, and it can't be nine because of the king's move. So these are a one-nine pair. This six is making this a four, five, six triple because now this can't be one, two. It could be three. It can't be four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. This is a three. And this is now a pair. One, two, three, four, five, one and six. This is a one, six pair. And this is four, five, six, with four in there, five in there, and six in potentially any of them. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, five, nine. There's no nine there because of that. So I keep trying to look for disjoint, but it's very hard to scan. Five is in one of those two. So the scanning on this is just breaking me. One, three, six, nine in here. Which doesn't seem to have any restriction on it at all. This is also 1369. 1369. That's not a 9 because of that 9. And that's it. I can't even see which digit I'm supposed to be looking at. So I know I can't put eight or four in any of the decimal de digits, but I've already placed the eights and the fours. So that's completely irrelevant.
So this digit is one of those two. Because this can't go in its row, it's not 2, 4 or 7 and it's not 8. So this is one of those two. Does that do anything for me at all? No, I, I literally just have to pick a digit at random and check. There is no other way of doing this. What about this in this box? It's not that, it's not two, four, seven or eight. So it's one of those four, except not that one. So it's one of those three. One, three, six and nine are all possible. So that does nothing. That in this box is one of those three, all of which can be one, three, six, nine. That does nothing. This in this box, it's one of those three, which I'd already determined. So that cell, no, pick another random dot. Let's start with, but this one I've got no information about. I mean, this is a quadruple. What is it? One, three, four, six. This is not four, so it's one, three, or six. Are oh, that, okay. And these are one, two, three, four, five, six, and nine. So, there's no nine in those, there's no one in those, but if we highlight all of these cells now, that is a one, three, six, nine quadruple, and that becomes a five. That's a three, that's a nine. The three takes the three out of those, this becomes a six, nine pair. There's no six here, this becomes a one, three pair. Uh, the five makes that a six which means that's a four and that's a five. Um, this is a six, nine pair now, so I can take the six out of there and the six, nine out of there. Uh. Um, I'm back to not being sure where to look. I'm assuming it's a disjoint or an anti-king thing. There's like four different levels of scanning in this. I mean, disjoint on its own can be fun. Um, Anti-king on its own can be fun. Combining them eh, and then adding this extra disjoint. Yeah. I'll admit this is not the sort of puzzle I find fun. So this is one, six or nine, two, three, six, one, six or nine. Because it's just 14 levels of scanning. Okay, so there's no four up here. Ah, oh, there was never a four there. This four means that's not the four and this is the four. There's no four there. This, this is one, three, six. So the five here means this is the five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the nine, which means this is the one and this is the nine. This is not the one. One, two, three, four, and nine. There's no four there. There's no four there. This is the four. This is a three, nine pair. Now there might be disjoint in play, but I've got, I don't know. These are one, three, six. There's no three there. 
So there's no one there because of that one. So I'm literally just having to stare at the grid for minutes at a time, trying to find the next possible hidden scanning thing. So this is one, three or six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, three or six. So this is a one, three, six triple with the six being in there. So there's no six there. So this is a one, three pair, meaning that's the six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, five, nine in here. This five makes this the nine and this the five. means that's not five and this is five. So across the top, is it one, three, six again? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, yeah, one, three, six. So this is one, three, six, nine. So the nine is down here. So there's no nine here. And this is also one, three, six, nine but there's no six, there's no six in either of those. So there is a nine in one of those. So for example, nines are lining up there, which are a, an equivalent disjoint set. So as soon as I get one, I get the other, and it's the same there. So the nines aren't doing anything by disjoint. Sorry, I'm just scanning for potential disjoint things because I've still got the one, three pair and the six, nine pair in the decimals. Like if there's a disjoint based Y wing or something, I'm probably here for an hour. Okay, so we've got one, three, six here. So three has to be in here. So it's not here. So that's a one or a six. Three is down here, three is down here, which I could have also used to eliminate the three from there. Similarly, three is in one of those two for the disjoint because it's the only place I can put three in those, but Okay, that is a one, three pair in position three. So I can't, one of those is a one, one of those is a three um, because I can't repeat them. So that has to be a six because if this is a one, both of those become three. That's a six. So this is not a six. That makes this a nine and this a six. This six makes this nine. 
which means that's not a nine. That nine looks over making that three and that nine. That three makes this six, this one, this three. The six looks up making this one, this three, which makes this one, which makes this three. This is now a six, which looks down making this one, this six. Uh, the six looks down making this one and this six. The one looks up making this nine. Uh, the three looks across making this one, this three, this one and this three, and that is the correct solution to this puzzle. It was very clever, and it was probably on theme. I'd actually gone out of my way to find, like, the laughing sound effects and, like, red balloon effects to put on the video, but I don't think I'm actually going to spend any time doing the extra editing or anything for this one. First of all, because I, I've just run out of time. I will not have time to do it. I literally, when this one came through, it was, I was literally told it's a 15 minute solve and it's not, this was what over 40. Yeah. I don't know. I think that level of scanning is uncomfortable for most people. Definitely is for me. Definitely on theme, <laughs> which is very appropriate for uh, everything down here floats. Very interesting puzzle. Definitely interesting. Well, thank you all for watching. Thank you, whoever Bob Gray was for sending that one through. It was definitely a challenge. And um, yeah, hope you're enjoying the content. And as always, good luck with your solving. <laughs>